Join me, 48 Hours Correspondent Erin Moriarty, on my podcast, My Life of Crime, as I take on true crime investigations like no other. This season, I'm looking into the labyrinth of crime and secrets within families. I'm cutting straight to the evidence and talking to the people directly involved, including investigators and the families of victims. Listen to My Life of Crime with Erin Moriarty wherever you get your podcasts. Inspired by the life of the savvy and ambitious Colombian businesswoman Griselda Blanco comes a new Netflix original limited series. Griselda tells the story of a devoted mother who, with her lethal blend of charm and relentless savagery, creates one of the most powerful cartels in history. Witness Sofia Vergara's captivating transformation into the godmother of the underworld. Griselda, now streaming only on Netflix. ABCs. Welcome to the Bare Naked ABCs. Last episode, we talked about daydreaming, and I have to say that this podcast has made many of my dreams come true, such as talking to Stephen Page and Susan Rogers. And getting to talk to my friends every week, speaking of whom, this week I am joined by Michelle, who I was hoping that this podcast would make her a lot of money, but alas, she is not a rich girl. (laughs) But be careful, she's a bit of a man-eater. So say it isn't so, Michelle. Say it isn't so. Aaron is also with us, but he disagrees with me often. During the last episode, he said, I'm out of touch, but Aaron, I can't go for that. But... You guys have been waiting on me for long enough. Let's get into this episode. This week we are talking about Deck the Stills. And if you didn't get my jokes, hopefully later on you will. I was about to say, I'm just a poor boy. Nobody loves me, but... (laughs) (laughs) This is from the Christmas album, Bare Naked for the Holidays. And let's talk and break this song down. I think it's going to be pretty easy to break this song down. Because it's basically just bare naked ladies covering deck the halls in their (laughs) own unique way. So why don't I hand it over to Aaron for the breakdown. Uh, I opted not to do a traditional (laughs) breakdown. uh, For reasons which will become readily apparent as soon as anyone listens to this song. Um... I will say uh, it's it's an acapella arrangement. It's an extremely short. I think it's 45 seconds. And as <laughs> Tracy said, it, it pretty much is just Deck the Halls. However, I don't know. I, okay, so I, I guess what I can do is uh, this part for the course for me. The most usual I can make this breakdown is I usually reference another band. I won't reference a band this time, but if you ever saw Ernest Saves Christmas, he sings a rendition <laughs> of... Oh, Christmas tree, wherein the only lyrics are, Oh, Christmas tree, 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 uh, ad infinitum. <laughs> Pretty much the closest you're going to get to this, although there there is actual uh, musical talent here being <laughs> being displayed, <laughs> but it's clearly a tongue-in-cheek, it's a joke song, I guess is the way that I would uh, I would describe it. Uh, so, I mean, this is uh, this is on Bare Naked from the hol- for the Holidays. Uh, where there are other less jokey songs. So to hear this one, I don't know, Tracy, you might be able to help me. Is this like at the end? Is this a like secret song? Is this like smack dab in the middle as a surprise? Uh, uh, give me a second here. Because uh, <laughs> I can tell you, I just didn't. You caught me on the one week I didn't look that up. <laughs> While I'm looking that up, why don't yeah. we put a snippet of the song in right here? I was just going to ask, yeah. Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. 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 Crosby, Stills, Nash. So this song is smack dab in the middle. That's it's perfect. at number 14 out of 21. So that that to me is like perfect for this song because you're not going to expect it, right? It's in the middle of the album. You're listening to one song, then all of a sudden this comes on. And uh, I have to think, I have to think, based on my own experiences with my band in the studio, that this was a joke that someone made at some point while they were recording. And they're like, okay, let's make that an actual track. (laughs) (laughs) Which is why we love them. Yeah, this is wonderful. (laughs) 
So what is the key that this is in? <laughs> oh, man, you're going to make me do work here. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. Or should we just leave that column blank this well, let week? Well, me, let me, hold on, wait one second. And young Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Crosby, Stills. You know, Tracy, it's funny that you mentioned all those songs at the beginning because I actually saw Hall & Oates in concert at the Augusta Civic Center in 1983. Really? Yes. Wow. They did were really? amazing. I really did. I was 13. I was in eighth grade. It was awesome. That I'm very jealous. That would have been an amazing concert at that time. It was great. I've been a fan of Neil Young for a very long time, but... In more recent years, I've become a big fan of Stephen Stills as well, and 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 Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young, and you know overall, um, amazing music, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Nash and Young, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, Crosby. So, in answer to Tracy's query. I didn't want to answer without. I hate answering a question unless I'm 100 percent sure. So I went back and listened, and uh, it is in the key of F major, which traditionally a, a lot of renditions of Deck the Halls are. Uh, although there there are uh, Christmas carols, you can be found in almost any key. Uh, but I, I've I've seen Deck the Halls in F major uh, frequently. So uh, yes, Deck the Stills, <laughs> pretty much Deck the Halls in. in uh, it's just Deck the Halls, but <laughs> but with Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young as the lyrics. <laughs> I mean, uh, how much do you, how much, how long do you do I need to talk about this, Tracy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's a lot to say about it. It's wonderful. I love it. Don't get me wrong. I just I don't know how much I can analyze this. Right. <laughs> I love well, it. Too. I love the harmonies in this. Like the harmonies are just spot on. Well, I think that's why that's why it works so well. Yes, is that it is a joke, but they are. They're they're giving it their best. <laughs> it's a joke, but it's gorgeous. Like yeah. they just nail it, and it's exactly everything that is fantastic about the bare naked ladies. And that's exactly what this song is a microcosm of why I love them. It's humorous, it's witty, it's hilarious, it's gorgeous and lush, and the harmonies are tight and spot on. And it just you can't get better than this. I feel like the biggest compliment that I could pay this song is to say that if I were someone from a country that did not speak English natively and I did not speak English and I was not aware of who Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young were, and I heard this and someone told me this is uh, a very serious and, uh, and uh, reverent rendition of a traditional Christmas carol, I would probably take it at face value because it's only the fact that they're just repeating Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young over and over again that makes it a joke and makes it funny. So that's it's hilarious, <laughs> but it's gorgeous. And it really is everything that is B and L. Yes. Yeah. A hundred percent. It's funny as hell. It is. I, every time I listen to it, it puts a huge smile on my face. <laughs> that's exactly. true. I, I and you can't agree. help Does that but for me sing too. to it. And they, the funny thing is, Stephen's <laughs> vocals on this song are phenomenal. I mean, he sing they oh all they all sing yeah. it like they mean it. It's amazing. It's gorgeous. Well, and you would assume for a song that has five words, yes, this word is this song is just five <laughs> words long. Weird Al, they beat you. Six words long. <laughs> For a song that's only five words long, you would assume that it's really easy to sing, but you get to the middle part because they keep it in order. Crosby, Stills, Nash, right. and Young. And they keep it in order the whole way through. There, You naturally want to, when it flips over to the next part of the next line in the verse, yes, I know to what you're start saying. over again with Cros Crosby. And they don't. They're like, what is that next Crosby, word? And they just Stills, keep it going the Nash whole and Young, Crosby, time. Crosby. Stills, Nash, Nash, and Young Cross. Crosby, Stills, Stills Nash, Nash, and... And, <laughs> yeah, and, and you want to. You want yeah, to start over back to Crosby. I, it's actually kind of hard to do it. Harder <laughs> than you would think. Uh, <laughs> you can't think about they're it. Doing it and they're doing like, it in my, harmony. My impulse is to cheat it and make one particular syllable last a couple of notes. They don't do that. No. no they, they, I ask, they, <clears throat> as, as much as it is 100% a joke song, there is some legit talent that went into making it, which is, I guess... 
what makes me laugh so hard about it and uh, what right. makes me appreciate it so much. Exactly. It is what makes it listenable over and over and over again. This mm-hmm. is one of those holiday songs that I will listen to every single time it comes on, and I will search it out sometimes just because it is so much fun just to hear. And sing along to, and choose whatever harmony part you want. It's awesome. Yep. Yeah. It's awesome. I'm going to, my, my sister and brother and I always do an overly dramatic rendition of We Three Kings when we get together for Christmas. <laughs> and we do the harmonies and everything, and I do my very deep bass part. And um, I'm going to have to teach them this song this, yes. this year, I think, for Christmas. That would be, that would be hilarious. <laughs> I want video of that. I, I was see just that. thinking the same thing. I want a video. So here's how. So you would not think Stills is the natural. You know, the, you would not think the Stills Crosby Stills and Nash is the natural thing to go with with this song. <laughs> I and yeah. Like if you're gonna, so I'm like, well, where did they come from? That you know, deck the, and I'm like, oh wait. I'm sitting there just kind of getting ready for this week, and I'm like, oh, deck the halls. Halls, hollow notes. Like, of course. This is probably, and then they're like, well, hollow notes is just too short. What other band can we throw in there? And they, like, who else do we revere and love? Because they, they are huge Neil yeah. Young fans, as well as, like, the rest of the group, you know, all, all four of them. So I'm sure they're like, well, let's go with this, this is group here. And I'm sure that's where this came from. That's why I was giving all those hollow notes references earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I have to guess that's where they were going. They love their wordplay. Which is why we love them. So my question to you guys, if you were going to pick a holiday song and you were going to pick the group members' names to go with the song, what group and what song would you pick? Radiohead, 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 <laughs> Radiohead. Yeah, that's mine. Carol the Bells with Radiohead. <laughs> hmm. Well, it's going to be Oh Holy Night. Yeah, nice one, and, nice one. Ooh. And I think it's going to have to be the Bare Naked Ladies. Bare Naked Ladies. <laughs> yes. Bare Naked Ladies. Bare Naked Ladies. Bare Naked Ladies. Should we do an entire album now like this and then send it to BNL as a tribute? <laughs> Every Christmas song we can think of, we'll just say <laughs> Bare Naked Ladies. <laughs> and we'll do a whole album. Well, what about you, Tracy? I was go I also thought of Carol of the Bells because I think it's one of the most gorgeous songs that's out there, especially for harmonies. I wanted it done with the, the Beatles band members. John yeah. Paul, George, and Ringo. Ooh. That's a tongue twister. It is. I was si- trying to go through it earlier in my head. I'm like, well, first, in order to get the syllables right, you got to cut out the and. So then, you know, after that, it is the you have you might have to mis- mix their names around a little bit to make it work because John Paul, George, and Ringo is a tongue twister. Oh yeah, but it would be gorgeous to have that. Yeah, I'm picturing it in my head. It would be interesting. That's my answer. I don't have the singing talent to, to try to pull that off though. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd need to go John, Paul, Ringo, George. That's probably it. That's what that would make sense. I think with that song. Poor George, he gets the short end of the stick again. He's just off on his own in his <laughs> mysterious corner. I I think I don't know, in in a lot of ways, technically speaking, I think he was the best musician. He was the best. Yes. Technically, uh, Agreed. in a lot of ways. I agree. Uh, as much as I'm a, I'm a John Lennon fan here now and forever, uh, I, George Harrison was so talented. Oh, he he deserved so much more recognition than he got. And and as much as I think it's hilarious that Weird Al made uh, the songs just six words long, I actually kind of like "I Got My Mind Set on You." <laughs> I know <laughs> it's a catchy <laughs> tune, man. <laughs> So what, we don't have a lot more to say about this song. Like, it, no. There's not a lot to this song. Um, there's not a lot of details online about this song. There's not a lot to, to share. Uh, so why don't we just go to our ratings? All right. So for this song, for the ratings, I was trying to think of a really good um, category title. And I thought the phrase that came to mind was, the emphasis is on the wrong syllable. 
So we're going to go by syllables. How many syllables do we give this song? And I, strictly on principle, because of what the song is, I gave it a five. I gave it five syllables because, number one, it's witty as hell. It's exactly the sense of humor that makes me love the bare naked ladies 100%. And and like we talked about before, the harmonies are utterly gorgeous. It's so tight. The song is so tight and perfectly executed. I have to give it a five. So that's that. Aaron, how many syllables do you give this song? Well, I really liked it. I can't say that it was a perfect tune for me. Uh, but I agree, given what it is for a, a 45 second joke song on a Christmas album, it's pretty incredible. Um, I really had to dig deep down here and look at what I was doing. I, I really kind of judged this against the other Christmas songs. So mm-hmm. I certainly like it. I like it better than Creek and Christmas. I like it better than Christmas Picks. I even like it better than Christmas Time. Oh, yeah, which I did like quite a bit. <laughs> yes, you um, did. So I am going to give this. A 3.95 syllables. Very, very high. That's a high score for you for the Christmas songs. Oh, yeah. I'm the Grinch here. Remember, kids' songs and Christmas songs, not my thing. But I really really enjoyed it. It's short, sweet, to the point. It's funny, and it's well done. Uh, I would listen to it again. I I think I will. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, 3.95 syllables for me. Awesome. Okay, Tracy, how many syllables do you give this song? (laughs) I'm feeling good this week. I, okay. This song has renovated me. I am feeling <laughs> rejuvenated. I am like enjoying the song. I will listen to this. This makes me feel like Christmas all year round. This totally is what Bare Naked Ladies is for me. They're funny. They're mel- melodious. And there's nothing I don't love about this song. Totally a five for me. Wow. Yes. Yes. It looks like I'm drinking the haterade this week, guys, but But, uh, I still still liked it quite a bit. You still liked it quite a bit. So let's see. This brings us. Got to be pretty high. It's between. Oh, my gosh. It's right below conventioneers and right above break your heart. Wow. Wow. That's uh, to me. I agree with that. To me, that works. So that's it puts it at number four in our list. That's impressive. That's a pretty good spot for it. That's a really good spot. I mean, it's so classically BNL. It it couldn't be better. I just feel like, yes. And it's a really good spot for it on this album too. Yes. You know, it comes after a really serious song, Footprints, that we'll come down come back to later on in a few few months from now. And then we have another song right afterwards that you know the one written by uh, Kevin, Christmas Picks, and so or that was uh, Jim, but so. It's right in that serious spot in the middle, and it just brings you right back up and ready to listen to everything all over again. So, Absolutely. 100%. All right. So I'm going to bring us down a little bit again. <laughs> I hate to do this. What is wrong with me? Tracy. Tis- oh, So my appearance for this week, Kevin recently released a uh, single. Uh, he did the keyboards on the single with a lady named Carol Pope. Aaron, I think that you would love this song. It's called Resist It. Um, it's Carol Pope is an interesting lady. Uh, she her music's a little bit harder than BNL, so it's interesting to hear to hear Kevin playing on this in the background. Uh, so Carol Pope is the former lead singer of a new wave act called Rough Trade. They're fed up with the negativity of the world, and they're just not going to take it anymore. Which totally does not sound like Kevin. That's this is the press release that I'm reading here. Kevin doesn't seem to be fed up about anything in this world, so it's really funny to hear them say this about him. You have this really new song that Kevin says pushes back against the daily onslaught of bad news and scandal. It's called Resist It. It's a really interesting song. So Carol has been recognized with three Juno Awards, multiple independent music awards, a Genie Award, four gold, one platinum, a double platinum album, so her latest CD music is called Music for Lesbians. Um, it explores the funny, tragic things about being a lesbian. She's just a very interesting lady. Her music is very different. It's not the type of music that I normally listen to. Uh, it's a little harder than, than what I normally listen to. But it's very, very interesting. And, and to hear Kevin playing on this, you know, the soft, melodic 
sounds of Kevin playing this instead is really interesting. It's different than than Stephen Page's White Noise, uh, but the same kind of idea behind it of we're, we're just done with the world being so negative all the time. Uh, so go out, listen to it. It's really great. I'll put the link up on the page um, as well as a link about the Samaritan magazine yeah. uh, where they talk about it. So I, I actually just listened to a, a brief clip from Resist It, and uh, I really like what I've heard. It has kind of a synth punk quality to it, which I guess is actually pretty close to New Wave, so that, that tracks. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah, I, I I think you might enjoy it, uh, Michelle. I think you should check it out. Definitely. It's so different than what Kevin normally will play. Very much so. That's that's true. <laughs> it's good to hear him going out and doing different stuff. Oh, yeah. Always good to flex your musical muscles and try something different. Wait, did I did I just say that I like a Kevin song? <laughs> what? What? Did, did I you, say that out loud? Are you bizarro, Tracy? You did say it out loud. <laughs> Well, I guess I'm going to be saying a lot of things out loud next week because we're going to be talking about the song Did I Say It Out Loud. Oh, there you go. I see what you did there. Hey, Tracy, I think that was your best transition yet. <laughs> oh, ouch. I, I was being sincere, but take that how you will. <laughs> that was a really good one, Tracy. Yeah, I actually really Thank enjoyed you. that. <laughs> Thank you. You're getting better at this. <laughs> In about oh. four more years, I'm going to be a pro. <laughs> Although I have to say I do love your corny puns. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Me too. me too. Well, thank you guys very much for joining <laughs> us on this very short episode this week, and have a great week. And join us next week for Did I Say That Out Loud? All right, sounds like a plan. We'll see you then. See you next week. Bye, everybody. Nash and Young Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young Crosby. To celebrate joining Pantheon Podcasts, Rock Camp, the podcast, the official podcast of Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp, is giving away a guitar signed by Mike Portnoy of Dream Theater, Marty Friedman, formerly of Megadeth, and legendary shredder Zach Wilde, plus our rock star counselors like Vinny Apice, Monty Pittman, and more. To enter to win, simply follow, rate, and review our podcast on your preferred platform, and that's all you have to do. For more information, go to rockcamp.com forward slash podcast.